Python could have been the king of all mobile apps. It was there before the iPhone, and even before Android. But something happened, something that wiped Python off the mobile map almost overnight. And you probably never even heard about it. Today, we'll uncover the shocking story of how the world's most powerful programming language lost the battle for mobile app dominance, how Google almost made Python the programming language of Android, and how Apple completely shut it out. It wasn't because Python wasn't good enough. It was because of betrayal, bad timing, and decisions that sealed its fate forever. But here's the twist. While Python lost the mobile war, it secretly conquered something even bigger. So stay with me, because by the end of this video, you'll never look at Python the same way again. In the year 2005. That time, the iPhone doesn't even exist. Neither does Android. But there's one company dominating the mobile world, Nokia and hidden inside their devices was Pi S60. So Pi S60 was a Python interpreter designed for Nokia's Symbian S60 mobile phones. At that time, developers could run Python scripts directly on their mobile phones, enabling them to create applications, games, and utilize the power of Python to automate tasks. It was a revolutionary concept and a golden opportunity for Python to take over the mobile market before Apple and Google could even enter the race. But then, everything collapsed. Nokia didn't see it coming. Then Apple dropped the iPhone in 2007, shattering the old world of mobile tech. Google followed with Android, a relentless machine built to adapt and conquer. As for Nokia, their Symbian empire cracked under pressure, bleeding their market share faster than anyone could blink. And by 2008, Nokia was on its knees, forced into a desperate alliance with Microsoft. And when Nokia fell, Pi S60 didn't just fade, it was buried alive. And just like that, Python's first and best chance at mobile dominance died along with Symbian. But here's where things get really interesting. In 2009, Google was still watching while its new player Android emerged on the table as a young, wild, and hungry open source juggernaut. And in those early days, they needed a programming language. And guess what? They considered Python. Google even launched SL4A, which was a scripting layer for Android that allowed developers to write Android scripts in Python. For a moment, it felt like destiny. But then, Google, the tech titan, had a choice to make because Java was already out there, battle-tested, compiled, and screaming fast. Python, on the other hand, was slower, softer, and interpreted Dreamer in a world that demanded raw speed. Unfortunately for Python, Google bet everything on Java. They didn't just sideline Python, they abandoned it. And by 2010, Java was crowned as the king of Android, and Python was left in the dust and a forgotten experiment. But the question is, what if Google had chosen Python? Would our Android phones be different today? We'll never know, because Google slammed the door shut and the key was thrown away. But it wasn't just Android turning its back on Python because on the other side of the war was Apple. If Google was a missed opportunity, then Apple was a death sentence. You see, Apple had a vision. Their apps had to be fast, efficient, and seamlessly integrated. That meant using programming languages they could control. So they pushed Objective-C. Later, they introduced Swift and Python. Python was too slow, too interpreted, and too unrestricted. So it didn't play by Apple's rules. Even today, running a full Python app on iOS is like sneaking through a guarded castle because Apple didn't just ignore Python, they blocked it. But Python didn't just gave up, some rebels fought back. Frameworks like Kivi and PyCute rose from the ashes, promising a way to build mobile apps in Python. But here's the harsh truth. These frameworks never stood a chance against the competition. Their interfaces were rough, their performance shaky. Every year, React Native and Flutter grew stronger, swallowing the cross-platform market. Yes, Python could do mobile, but it couldn't compete. The dream was alive, but it was bleeding out. So the mobile world moved on and businesses didn't want Python apps anymore. They wanted better UI frameworks, stronger performance and native experience. And that brings us to the final twist, the one you didn't see coming. Python didn't die, it adapted. While it lost the mobile war, it conquered something bigger. It became the king of AI, the titan of web development, and the shadow master of hacking. These are its crowns. The backend was its true empire, a hidden kingdom behind every neural network, every website, and every hacked system. Python's shadow looms large. And this is the untold story of how Python lost the battle of mobile apps but won the war. If you love Python, smash that like button and subscribe for more.